Think You Can Podcast, Taking It to the Street. Taking It to the Street, with episode 39? Uh, yeah, there we go. We can on up there. Yeah, we getting on up. Was it Jodeci? You gotta get him. <laughs> get on up. How's everybody doing today? We had to do some testing today, find some different locations to shoot at around the city. Yeah. So we're over here by the river today. Uh, nice if, you, if you notice, uh, if you recognize the background, uh, come in and tell us where we are, if you know. Yeah, let yeah. us know in the comments, let us know. So today's podcast, we're kind of just talking about some things, just having a conversation, and um, we just need to say growing up. I know mental health is a really big thing now. We want to talk about, like, do you think everybody that grew up in the inner city probably have some mental issues? At yeah. least 80%. Uh, yes, um, to what you consider normal, right? I mean, because right. uh, that's the spectrum, right? Right. Um, but we learn so many um, coping mechanisms. Oh my God, yes. Uh, yeah. In the hood, Su- survival mechanics. Yes. Um, people think these are tools, but it could be toxic traits. Right. You know what I mean? Like that's the thing. Everybody's yeah. a toxic or a narcissist or or things like that. But you learn those traits and the skills uh what have you uh it's a survival mechanism and uh sometimes they are manipulative yeah yeah definitely uh you know what i mean um, let's just think about like you remember when was in school right high school certain things you wouldn't buy because you're like if i buy this i'm gonna get roasted guarantee yeah. you like go to china what's that we call it the chinese store like kim, yeah, sir, kim's yeah, fashion sir, the, the, yeah. you don't get uh, Fubu Platinum. You don't get that from Kim's yeah. fashion. Yeah, you get Cause that. Fat Albert has a gold teeth and a do rag on. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's not official. That is not official. And then when you walk in school, especially at McClellan, oh man, look at Mike. You got that Boo Boo Platinum on. Man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Boo Boo. And people think so quick, and you got to be thinking uh, quicker. Um, even though you look good, you know what I mean, yeah. with Walmart shoes, and uh, they tried to make it affordable. Yeah. For us, but you gotta still go to school and defend yourself. Right. Um, and then you think about uh, they was the first Teespring, the, the Kim's fashion. They used to have the T-shirts and stuff. They still do. Yeah. You know, they, they, instead of saying uh, "ain't no limit," they had a mystical shirt that "ain't no time." <laughs> <laughs> say, well, ain't no time. What? You ain't never said that. Well, but <laughs> they probably was the first ones to do that. And they, and, and the they were business. selling it straight from the store, though. They weren't doing it online, though. Yeah, yeah and then that, now this uh, is a really good way to make money for people. Like, you know what oh, I mean? Oh, yeah, they, definitely. Everybody with a screen printer, like, you know what I mean? And uh, no knock to you. I mean, uh, like, no, no, show no. me how to do it, of course. Exactly. Um, and they're making well, see, t-shirts. now you can do it online now. Just uh, make a T-shirt, and they, they'll ship it for you and everything. You have to pay them a certain cost yeah, of these know, T-shirts. So. Exactly, and you don't have to have the storefront, and you don't have to pay the rent. Right. So it's a really good uh, and effective way to make money. Uh, especially to start your own business. Well, yeah, when you think about the, uh, like say, you think about how things go in the hood, they, they was talking about like violence and stuff is on the rise, but violence been happening <laughs> ever since we was in junior high, it was crazy. I mean, and, and before uh, then, yeah, you know Yeah, before what I mean? then, uh, it was crazy. And what I would say to a kid is try to think as much as you can before you do. Like think before, instead of being emotional, then think, like, you get emotional, I want to shoot somebody. You go shoot them, and then you think, like, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't have done that. But now you're facing 15 to 20, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Don't be reactionary yes. in your thinking. You know what I mean? I'm not saying you're going to be perfect, but at least try to get 8, 9 out of 10. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I mean, because things happen in life. They do. Right? They do. And, uh, and it's going to trigger you. And yes. uh, a lot of these things happen out of the blue. Right. But sometimes when we go back, we're like, well, maybe I shouldn't have been there. Maybe I sh- shouldn't have been drinking before I was driving. Right. You know what I mean? Some mistakes, you can um, decrease your risk. Right. And then every kid in the inner city, you think about this really, I think, affects a lot of kids' mental health in the neighborhood is walking away. Yeah. I can't walk away. I got to punch this dude's lights out. Uh, yeah. I can't walk away. I got to argue with this dude because I don't want to be deemed weak. Yeah. I can't walk away because if I don't do nothing, then he gonna do something to me, you know what I'm saying? I remember clear as day um, having these anti-violent, uh, you know, dare and things like that. Yeah. Uh, Did it work? To talk about what, you know, dare worked for me, you know what I mean? I'm yeah. a success story, but yeah. uh, but the anti-violent thing, they tell you, your teachers tell you, and the adults tell you, well, just walk away, you know what I mean? They can, you can get pushed in the back. You can get uh, 
in a situation where you're bullied, uh, situations where people know you're not going to do anything. You know right. what I mean? And then it's it's long suffering. You right. know what I mean? They, it's a thing where I could have just uh, punched them one day, and right. got suspended or whatever, and um, maybe nobody would have messed with me. Mm-hmm. So, but that you know that one punch can really hurt the kid. Right. You know what I mean? Now you got to yeah. deal with the assault charges and exactly. or his family. Some people can't take L's. Right. His and families want to like right. Can't take L's. Like you now better go get them. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. And that's a never in the cycle. Like it's dudes that we grew up with. They have to still think about stuff they did when they was younger. They got to look yeah. over their shoulder. You know what I'm saying? Because of something they did when they was younger. Yeah. And you don't know, so that person gonna come back. You know, get their revenge or whatever. Um, and I like to say sorry to the people I've wronged or whatever, yeah, because, too, because I don't know if that still stays with them. You right. know what I mean? It, it was just a moment for me doing something reckless, careless, and harmful to somebody else, and they kind of live with it. You know what I mean? They're in therapy for some what, well, what I did. You know what I yeah, mean? Because some here. people I'm definitely apologetic on that. I've done yeah. things to me that yeah. I still think about. So sure. you know, I know because I've done things to people. When, when we was with. 15, 16, 17, 8, somewhere in there. Like, a lot of people, they, you know, they they talk about it, but I don't think they really understand the depthness of it, of not having that father figure around. It's kind of like a race car. You're a race car when you're that young. You have, you go from zero to 100 just like that. But if you don't have a governor, most cars have a governor, and they don't let you get to a certain speed, then it, it throw you back down. If you don't have that, I mean, you do all kind of stuff. I know I didn't have it. I did all kind of stuff, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I had that. It's they, like... And the crazy part is, I, most of our family probably don't even know oh, yeah, how yeah. crazy we was. They, we know because we was around <laughs> yeah. each other. But our, most of our family, because I think we was good at separating, kind of like the plates with the separators. Yeah. We was good at separating yeah, so, everything. Yeah. And I think that is like a mental yeah. health thing, right? Yeah. Because you can separate everything. Not everybody else does that. I know for me, I do that a lot. And I, um, I got to stop doing it. I, I'm trying to work on not doing it. But I do that a lot. I can separate things in this have boundaries and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, in this arena, I might act like this, or that, yeah. that arena, I might utilize certain skills yeah. and things like that. But if you're talking about not having a father figure, you know what I mean? I have my um, my dad in my life, all my life. Yeah. Um, it gives you um, another layer of accountability and uh, protection, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, you get policed at home, so you don't get policed so yeah. my dad is going to discipline me or right. uh, put me on death row right. or like, you know what I mean, or choke me like the streets would like beat me to death. You know what I mean? He, I had to, um, I had that extra layer of protection with yeah. him. Like, hey son, um, don't do that. If somebody else caught you doing it, um, it would be worse. I'm going to catch you. I'm going to punish you. I'm going to discipline you. But it would have been a lot worse if somebody else. So, and he can tell me examples um, of when he was right. a kid, why I shouldn't do that, and what happened to him when he did. I did that, and it gave me uh, gave me a complete understanding. Right. Uh, I saw a problem or a consequence of my action mm-hmm. through both sides. Like to my side, because my dad had went through it, he did it, right. and then the other side, when you do it and you get caught. Right. Uh, so I was like, ooh. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. this is a question I always wondered, because like I said, my dad, he said he died when I was 12. What phase do you think, it's important to have your dad in your life, period, but which one you think is the highest? Is it before you turn 18 or after you turn 18? Which one you think is probably like, it really like the value of having the, the father in your life? Man, that's a really, really hard question to answer. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I got so much good advice yeah. uh, from my dad after I was 20. Yeah, we exactly, worked, we worked exactly. To, we yeah. worked together yeah. uh, at, 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 in the same building. We right. used to have lunch together. I got so much advice as a grown man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, my dad got married, remarried. He gave me a lot of advice, bill paying and things like that. Right. Just talking to him. And, you know, Mike, um, we would go to my dad's house and we yeah, would talk definitely. to him. And we still hear those stories. And it was after 18. Yes. But really learning how to ride a bike, uh, being tough, martial arts, learning how to fight, yeah. learning how to navigate um, elementary school, junior high. Right. Uh, talking, uh, learning how to provide for a family. Right. Or, or, or a child, when I was a child, was um, lessons I use to this day with my son. Right. 
You know what I mean? I, I uh, remember so much stuff that my dad did for me that I do for my son. Exactly. Uh, and I can't tell you um, the advice that he gave when I was 20 is more, it was less important than him teaching me how to ride a bike or uh, how to write my name. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I don't get to 20. Boy. And 25, if he wasn't there, uh, you know what I mean, when I was 10 or 11. And see, this is what I mean by that, right? Like, when you're young, you don't understand things as an adult, right? Mm -hmm. But he tried to, your dad tries to teach you adult things, yeah. but you're not there yet mentally. Yeah. But then when you become an adult and you can talk to your dad as an adult, now he can give you that nav them navigation mm -hmm. pieces that you couldn't understand when you were 16, you know what I'm saying? Because you're still a kid, you know what I'm saying? That's what I told you. That was what I was yeah. trying to tell you when you was 10 and you was 15, but now you really and see. And a lot of these kids going through that, because I know I went through that, like, it's hard to get to a point where you could trust somebody that's not your dad, like that's not your genetics that you talking to, you know what I'm saying? This other person may be talking to you from a place that you feel that way, that they don't understand really who you are because you're not from them. Yes. Not knocking a person that's talking to them, I'm just saying like, you don't have that genetic connection. Like your your parents know, what kids understand is your parents know what you're made of because you're from them. Yeah, you know, I, I used to try to think I was hiding stuff from my mom, but I'm pretty sure she know who her son is, you know what I'm saying? From her and my dad, and genetics from both sides, and traits yep. and stuff like that, she know, you know what I'm saying, who her son was, you know what I'm saying? And I'm pretty sure my dad, if he was there, he probably would know too, definitely. But a lot of these kids, man, in the inner cities don't have that parental structure, though. Yeah. Like, you know, you grow up, some kids, we know, grow up without both of their parents. They just live with their grandma, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Exactly. And they, did more stuff, you know, yeah. what I mean? because they didn't they didn't have that. Uh, you know, grandma was can only, they only have so much energy at, at some age to parent like they did when they was younger. They don't have that same energy, yeah. so most kids kind of know that. So and they you, gonna like, I can do whatever I want to do. And That's, the parents you know say that all the time. You wasn't like that when I was a child. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but you like uh, let the grandkids get away with anything. And uh, one point he was making, like he was talking, he said he was talking to um, as a child, he was talking to somebody else. You don't see the, um, what's that, um, the motivation or the motive right. behind, like, what is this strange man as an adult talking to a kid for trying to give him advice? Like, right. who does exactly. it? He ain't my daddy. You know what I mean? Well, I, you know, you know, I know that uh, people will try to still help you. You know what I mean? They're trying to mentor you, you know, and trying to. Because they were a kid without a father, they're trying to give back and things right. like that. But you don't understand that because you don't you've never seen a man work with kids. You know what right. I mean? That was wasn't a father. And you don't know how the fathers kinda react. It was like, well, uh, you so you don't trust that. You know, you don't trust like Right. This man is he some kind of weird um guy, why is he concerned in me? You know what I mean? That's true. Um, and some adults uh, look at people like, well, why he want to work with kids? Or why she want to work with kids? It must be something wrong with them. Like, well, they want to help and they, they want to give back. You know what I mean? Man, what's wrong? And that's a real what's thing. Wrong? Oh, there you go. Okay. My phone about to die. But another thing, too, I think, um, is that a lot of times, um, Living in the inner city, right? You think about opportunities and stuff and jobs and stuff like that. You know, I know people say it's not all about the money, but if you don't have enough to take care of your basic needs, I'm pretty sure that I've been there. It does mess with your mind a little bit because you're like, wait a minute, why am I not making I'm working like I was told to yeah, do. I'm working I'm, hard, I'm, yeah. but I'm not trying to be rich. I'm just trying to have enough, you know what I'm saying, to be able to do things, you know what I'm saying? Oh, just really weird. Like you know, we uh, discussed in the yeah. podcast, the price of rents, oh, car yeah. notes, um, taxes are, are going up. You know what I mean? Um, twenty thousand, fifty thousand, eighty thousand um, don't get you uh, what they used to get. Like salary-wise, yeah. or uh, trying to buy Man. a house. You know what I mean? Boy. A hundred thousand dollar house used to be the thing. You Boy. know what I mean? A two hundred, you was woo, you was doing that was your a thing. Brand new house. Yeah, that was cold you know what I mean? Like, went up. Yeah. Uh, no, nah, but it's it's not like that. You know, I like no more. Like people it? say, I had I owned a house when I was 20, you know yeah. what I mean? I bought my first house, but the things are like that. Yeah, but the house he bought when he was 20 probably was 60000 you know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. 
And, um, and see, that's the thing, too, with inflation coming up now. And we're trying to tell the youth, you really have to be intentional about what you educate yourself in and what you do it on career path. Because if the interest rate go up to 7% and you're trying to buy a house, man, you can cancel Christmas. Yeah, I mean, you're going to be paying uh, even an $80,000 house. You're going to be paying that for eternity, basically. I was looking at this uh, apartment website, right? It's called The Point. Look at it on my phone real quick. They had a 385 square foot apartment, bro. 385 square foot apartment was like 900. It was some crazy. Man, that's the size of a jail cell, seems like, man. What? Man, that's crazy. You said 300? That's because I'm outside. I'm, on, I'm not on Wi Fi. It was crazy, bro. Uh, and the, I should have screenshotted it, man. And that affects everything, right? Um, yeah. Your career. The, your income, like the money doesn't, doesn't matter, all that love is fine. Um, that affects your dating, right? Yeah, Be, it does. Like, you know what I mean? And they, they say it on, affects women, or what, but it affects men too. Like, you're dating for help. Right, exactly. You're not, you don't know if you're compatible, but you need somebody to help out on this rent. Exactly. You need somebody to, you know, kind of go half on a car note. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it, that affects everything. You know what I mean? Now you're messing with a guy or girl that you shouldn't be messing with. Yeah. And now y'all got a kid. And now, like, you know, the cycle continues to progress. And then if you're blessed, man, don't uh, don't take your spouse for granted. Oh, like, yeah. you know, I don't, um, wife, my wife been with me for 11 years, man. I don't take her for granted. I try to do the best I can for my family, uh, wife and two kids. I love you, Ashley, MJ, and Naomi. I just uh, had to take them to a dentist appointment. All that stuff costs. Take them to a dentist appointment. Then you gotta take them to school. Then they want Lunchables, all that costs. Yeah, exactly. Plus paying the rent, paying utilities, <laughs> and, and other stuff. You and they're first, like without yeah. being sick. You yeah, know what oh, I mean? That's just like, you know Without what I mean? Question. Just all you do, like when you, um, you're looking at your career, your education, it's all like for them or in consideration it of is. them. Everything's for them. You yeah, would yeah. need a lot less money taking care of you. Like I would say, I would actually, I'm, I'm gonna say that having a family actually probably saved my life and thinking. Yeah. Because when I was younger and didn't have a family, it's a lot of kids had it. I don't got nothing to lose. <laughs> what I do? I ain't got nothing to lose. Roll the dice. One I can roll time. the dice. I ain't got nothing to lose. And that is not the way to live, man. No. Because boy, when, when that dice roll snake eyes, no. <laughs> you get a lot of seven. One snake, you don't want to get snake eyes at all. That one time yeah, you get snake time. eyes. You don't know what the snake eyes gonna be. Yep. <laughs> it may be snake eyes on your freedom. It may be snake eyes. Now you didn't have eight kids. Now you didn't have eight kids by five different women. Snake mm -hmm. eyes. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. Child support take all your money. You know what I'm saying? It may be snake eyes. You do something crazy. Now you know you got to deal with it for another 15 years. You know. And that's another thing, kids. You know, uh, getting a felony. I think a lot of kids don't understand that. Like when you get a felony on your record how hard the mountain climb just got yeah. when you get a felony. You have to almost be an entrepreneur for real. You gotta be creative. You have Because to. you cannot get into these high-end career jobs with a felony. They're gonna, some states you can, I don't know about Little Rock, I don't think so, man. They're probably gonna, they, cause that's the first thing they ask for, a criminal report sometimes. Yep, Bank You got a felony, man. Sometimes that's your problem with misdemeanor, depending on where you work at. Yeah, exactly, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Or even, if you know you get your career, you're a nurse, you're you know uh, this or that, you're licensed. Right. You can lose your license. You're a lawyer. You can't get some certain kind of charges. So you are never above like a felony, basically. Yeah. They can uh, things like that can change your life. You know what I mean? You gotta one little mistake. For sure. And man, that's the thing to minimize. Try to minimize the mistakes as much as you can, even though it's hard. But you can do it, and uh, try to. Uh, I think that's another thing that's growing up in the hood too, right? Like we going to school or something like that, or when you living in the inner city, the culture, right? It seems like the mistakes get more attention yeah, than the yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Like watching the news, you know, the get more. You know what then, like, you know, uh, uh, you outreach know, program, yeah. uh, or you get written up drive. in school alone for them. They get more attention at home. You know what I'm saying? Then, and it's then not no. It's just how the culture is because your parents are going to work. They don't have time to stop. As long as things are going fine, yeah. it kind of how it is. It's fine. They don't have time fine. to like. But then when it stops, the kind of like when the car broke yeah. down, God dog, the car blew out. The maintenance yeah, and the you know praise 
off yeah. on good stuff, you know what I mean, yeah. and to keep the stuff on track. Yeah. Is you know what I mean. Uh, we push that back, right? right? And then when something happens, now we like, oh, like what, Stop what do we press. need to do? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to get you where you need to be, like yeah. it's reactive and right. it's not proactive. Right. But yeah, I think one of, that's the, one of the things we probably gonna have to change that kind of culture. I, I try to do that with my kids. I tell them I'm very proud of them for what they do. Even if they just like say, just do something good at school. I'm proud of you for getting, bringing a good note home. You know what I'm saying? I'm proud of you, son. And uh, it's something like that, just that small, man. And they look for it every time too. Yeah. They'll tell me stuff on purpose, just just cause. You know what I'm saying? And they they, they get that validation uh, at home. Yeah. From a healthy, loving place with uh, no motives. Yeah. Um, you don't have to search. Yeah. Um, uh, anywhere else for that. So. And then, uh, I guess it depends on your perspective, but when you look at it from a reality standpoint, a lot of these kids that live in the inner city, they deal. It's so much negative around them. Yeah. How can you really be positive when it's so much negative? You know, you got like ninety percent negativity, and, it's and you double. expect them to, you know, try yeah. to be positive. It's it's re you really gotta have a mental chip. <laughs> implanted in your brain to kind of outthink that much negativity because it's really hard, man. Yeah, and then another thing, like, um, I don't know if it is that much negativity, really, or they just highlighting it, or it's a lot of negativity and they're highlighting it and they're yeah. uh, multiplying that. I guess the negativity, right. like, when kids trying to survive, like, say, coping mechanisms, like going to school, yeah. or roasting. If, it, if it's not roasting, they're trying to fight. It's physical. If it's not fighting, it's some other kind of macho stuff. And they, they're jumping. You know it's established. Yeah, it, man. You know like what I'm saying? Mini jail. Like, yeah. you know, uh, you got to establish dominance. You got to do this. Yeah. You got to be cool. You got to. Exactly. Uh, uh, don't say nothing. Don't fart. Don't have dirty clothes. Don't Boy. you know? Make sure you wear lotion. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just, uh, just anything. And then you know what though? I it's think, pressure, right? I, I, I used to think it was pressure, like when I was young in junior high. But I think when I got like the ninth grade, I really got to the point where like, why do I even care about what people think? Right? But that's because in your head, you think when you're young, you think like, if I wear the same shirt twice, somebody gonna say something. Yeah. But then when you wear the same shirt twice, to seeing those people like they not even studying you, right? You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. And I started you, to realize that like you was I'm, in the I'm, mirror, I'm, like yeah. really thinking about this. Yeah. Like, God, if I wear this shirt two times, I know I wear it, wore it last Thursday. You know yeah. what I mean? Can I wear it Tuesday? You exactly. know what I mean? Exactly. Um, but exactly. that's the thing, right? When you graduate levels, you get different skills and you get different mind states, right? right. You know yeah. what I mean? But, Theoretically. Yeah. Well, we get like I'm trying to like you said, I'm trying to take my son on the level of a 13 year old he's six right or exactly. i'm giving him a 20 year old advice well son don't worry about these people Boy. you know what i mean blah 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 they don't not they not yeah, they know not what they do or blah 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 yeah. but he's he's five exactly he don't understand or realize that so i have to break it down dumb it down or uh, what have you to his emotional maturity and his emotional intelligence level right to to fend um off these attacks until he gets the mental, uh, emotional fortitude, or he graduates to that level, yeah, so sure. it doesn't it doesn't bother him. You you said uh, like ninth grade, you had an uh, epiphany, right? right? You had a realization about the simple clothes thing, right? You know what I mean? We just trying to make people realize stuff faster, but you, you realize you can't they get make under them your skin. realize if they know they can get under your skin, they'll get under your yeah. skin without question. They're pest they're like being pessimistic. They they would definitely do it. And anything you know that can lift them up, like if they can get a laugh, oh yeah, off definitely. picking with you, you know, oh, well, you know what I mean, and whatever gets them that attention, you know what I mean, uh, that's their emotional maturity level uh, yeah. and, uh, and on uh, that grade level. You find out the world is almost like full of bigotry, right? The people who are like that, they'll they'll joke on you, and then the class be laughing. But if you come back. And you turn the tide, they get mad now. Oh you yeah. Know what I'm now, they, now things want to escalate, or they head home trying to commit suicide. Right. And they the victim. Right. Well, Michael, Michael was talking about me. Well, you've been talking about Michael. Right. For three months. Exactly. He got back with you. Yeah. About your shoes. You know what I mean? About your parents' divorce. Now he went too far. Right. Exactly. You know what I mean? You've He's the big killing. bad wolf. You've been killing Mike the whole time. You know what I mean? You're talking about his lunch. You know what I mean? He got bologna sandwich because he can't afford ham. You right. was on him. Right, exactly. <clears throat> and that's the thing, man, because, like, I know with, uh, like, bullying and stuff, right, it's crazy because some kids just don't want to be violent, man. You know what I'm saying? 
but then they go to a school where it's like it's like the culture. Yeah. And that's that could cause mental health because it's like I don't want to be violent, like, but I gotta defend myself at the same time. It's a weird situation to be yeah. in. And then they prey on you because oh, this this is a good person. He don't want violence. Right. He don't want this conflict. So I can make myself look tougher to the other people around. Right. They won't bother bother me if I bother him. Right, exactly. It's a weird thing. Yeah. Uh, it's you know what I mean you gotta but you gotta learn how to navigate all that stuff yeah. and that helps you. Uh, hopefully you didn't don't develop uh, toxic qualities. Boy. Uh, but that helps you uh, with your work life. You that's kind of like the collateral damage sometimes in surviving in the inner cities. You have toxic qualities, man. You know yeah. What I'm I mean, because it got it you out of this situation. It toxic to you. Yeah. Because it, it helped me. Because this is what you're gonna find out too. You sometimes is uh the things that you may use to survive and help you get through life. Somebody else may deem that toxic, but that may be the same thing to make you successful. Yep. And you gotta navigate it, you navigate that at the same time. Cause not everybody can appreciate different things from other people because it's not, uh, especially with kids, right? They don't understand that everybody's different. It's kind of like snowflakes. No yeah. two snowflakes are the same. No two people are the same. Yeah. It may be some similarities, but then it still could be differences at the same time. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, you like hamburgers, I like hamburgers. But then it starts differentiating. You like mustard on yours, I like ketchup mm -hmm. on mine. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And, and I say a lot of people don't know how to res resolution. They don't like compromising. Uh, like, yeah, you know, but they see compromising as a, as a weakness. You, you like know? mustard, I like mayonnaise. Yeah. How are we going to solve that? Honey mustard right in the middle. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or if you make a burger and you don't have mayonnaise, all you have is mustard, just give me the burger by itself. Nothing, nothing on it. Right. Yeah, and exactly. I'm happy, you happy, let's go ahead, let's eat. You know what I'm saying? But it seems like that resolution part is tough sometimes, man, because you're not taught it to, res to resolve issues. You're only taught to meet it with conflict. You know, if you solve your problems with conflict all the time, you're going to destroy everything around you. Eventually, you're going to destroy everything around you. It's like being the Incredible Hulk. When the Hulk got mad and he turned green, it didn't matter what's around him. It's getting destroyed. You know what I'm saying? He can't control the rage, man. Exactly. And, you know, you know what I mean, the Hulk got you out of a, a, a few uh, situations right. uh, in your youth or growing up in the hood, but that ain't going to work in maybe right. in corporate America. No, it won't work. No. Uh, and things like that. You got to, uh, and still, this is the thing, to, this is the thing to, um, just because something worked don't mean it was right. Oh, yeah, definitely. I did it. I, I'm, de I'm learning that as I get older. I did it. It happened. Uh, it happened. It what made me successful, uh, but I can't do that no more because right. I've grown. Exactly. I know that it's morally wrong, uh, or it's a better way to do things. Right. You know what I mean? Even uh, like uh, your mom raised you as a single parent, uh, but you wouldn't suggest. It. No, definitely not. You know what I mean? Uh, she did a great job, and um, you uh, became a, a great man, a good father, good husband. But you wouldn't suggest it uh, right. for anybody else. You wouldn't no. say that's the right thing to do. They all should do it like me. Like uh, Tyler Perry is uh, extremely successful, uh, but they say he, you know he was homeless at one time. Right. He wouldn't go out and tell you, "Hey, you should be homeless first. Right. You know what I mean? You know, throw away all your money and just be um, a homeless. You got to be homeless, or you got to lose everything to make yourself something. You know yeah. what I mean? Just because he did it and it worked for him. Um, I think uh, if you could do this, like if they, you know, with Meta, they got the VR and stuff. Yeah. If you could somehow make the moments and situations of being a single parent or being an adult, the stuff you have to know and remember, if you could put that into Meta, they could put that on and see, oh, I got to pay <laughs> lights, water, gas, mortgage every month. It's like the Sims. You know? <laughs> <laughs> a cell phone bill. If I want this cell phone, it's gonna cost me a hundred dollars, one hundred and fifty dollars a month. You know what I'm saying? If I wanna, um, if I wanna, if I go to school for the wrong thing and get all these loans and stuff, I'm gonna. I still gotta pay for that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, if I have a kid and I'm a single parent, now it just came two times tougher. You know what I'm saying? Three or four kids now, it's four or five times tougher. And just because somebody got four kids and they make it look easy, you don't know their day-to-day -day struggles. Man, man. Uh, I know people that make less money than me, got more kids than me, and they seem fine, but I don't know what those conversations look like or what kind of deals they're making in the dark. 
Exactly. And I don't want to. And that's just another thing too, right? When you know something, such when you're an adult, and like if somebody like fronting, trying to act like they got money, you could tell like this dude definitely is fronting. He really don't got money like that because of the, you know how stuff costs. Yeah. The cost of stuff. He probably leased that. You know what I'm saying? He don't own it, you know what I'm saying? Well, like, just, uh, the watch he got on, that is least. not a real Rolex. <laughs> I mean, a real Rolex costs 30, can be $30,000. That's somebody's salary, bro. <laughs> for the year. Yeah, for the year. Yeah. That's a low end. Yeah, that's the low end Rolex. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You uh, know, that's why you got to be careful, man. Uh, don't put yourself in situations and binds that you can't get out of, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And that's a hard, that's a hard discipline to learn, and, uh, though. But some people do stuff, get in the bind, and then they magically work themselves out of it. You know what I mean? God bless them, whatever. And then they go back into getting the same bind. Right. You know, they max out the credit cards again. Right. Exactly. I've been there. I just do that when I was younger. I've been there, man. It's like, what am I doing? I had to look at myself. What am I doing? I think I was like, what? I had a credit card at like, what, 17 or something yeah. like that? Like, what am I doing? Why, why do I keep doing this? I had to change. And um, now I'm, I'm, I'm not saying I'm like completely there, but I'm almost I can turn into a complete tight wad yeah. and just buy the minimal stuff that I need. But you can't. It's hard to do that with a family because you could torture everybody around. Yeah, you, yeah, you know exactly. What I'm it's hard. But it's hard to budget. I learned that when I was younger. I could turn it on. I could turn it off. You know what I'm saying? There's a time to shine. There's a time to scale back. Yeah. And uh, nothing wrong with scaling back. That's being smart. Like with the recession, they talking about coming, all this stuff going up. This is probably the time to scale back. You know what I'm saying? If you got a house and you had that joker paid down, why would you go buy a new house for? Unless it's you in an area that probably maybe is changing or something. But you know, if you got a nice house, up and coming yeah, area, yeah. up and coming area, why, why buy a whole another house? You know what I'm saying? You know why? You, you got to keep up, man. You know because a new house now is what we think about almost three fifty now. Yeah, I mean, and, it, and, it's and the like, water's going up. It's probably gonna be four hundred. Yeah, I mean, grand, and we're you know not saying? talking about mansions. You know no, what I mean? We uh, talking about a what, what, eighteen two thousand square foot house? Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. And that's still a lot of square footage, but yeah, that's but, a lot of money you gonna but, pay you know too. What I mean? Normally, when you got million. a you know you got a nice salary, you should you know that's gonna be good. But that's man, if you paying over twelve to fifteen hundred dollars a month in just mortgage, people paying that you know uh, with mortgage and insurance that, and escrow, people man, paying that's crazy. that uh, for apartments. Now. They are, yeah. Every, you know what that's what I'm saying, yeah. I mean, it's small apartment. It's not even, yeah. you know, 1,800 square feet. The stuff we could get, like high school in our 20s, the stuff you can get for twelve, fifteen hundred dollars a month. Man, you know, oh, we God. asked enough. You be staying on cancer somewhere, bro. Now, now, shoot. oh boy, you getting, that's, that's uh, Colonial getting, Valley, man. Yeah, you get, <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Quail Valley. You know no, Colonial mean? Valley. Shout out to Pine. Is Quail Valley still around? I don't know. <laughs> Chopper sounds included. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> No. <laughs> and um, then you can't live in trailers. They they took that. You know they got some kind of law in the city now where you can't. It's no more trailers now. That's all the country living. You know what I'm saying? That's. And um, like I say, buying just buying real estate stuff like that now, unless you uh, you rich or something like that. That's the only people that's gonna really get over like really take advantage of this because you can buy cash. And you got and if you can buy cash, you can get a better deal. But we just and don't you have got the cash. Le- like that. Look, and you got less. To uh, less to lose, right? Right. Definitely. Like I can buy the same house maybe as a rich man and flip the property, right. but I'm all in on that property. Yeah. If it go down, I'm gonna take a tremendous loss, almost and ruining it. That's why me. you see a lot, them, yeah. like you know, the richer people, like, well, uh, I, I'm gonna take a big loss, but I'm gonna still it's a drop in the bucket. Yeah, you know I mean, saying? I'm gonna still be able to pay my mortgage, and I'm I'm, I'm gonna be able to recruit, re- right. recoup. Me is gonna damage my credit. You know what I mean? Uh, and that's the thing. I'm gonna have a, you, you, do you see those Grant Cardone commercials? Oh, yeah. Dude is so Dude is a salesman. He made me, funny. I think I can do I mean, it. Dude, I, mean, I mean, dude. I mean, dude. I mean, I buy multifamily properties, man. <laughs> but they don't realize, people don't realize he operate out of debt. Now, if you got the discipline and understand how they work, we don't understand how they work. Yeah, but you and know. And then, uh, of course, he got more advantages because, of, you know, if we his, his demographic his channel, and color, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Of course, but. You know, we can't just walk in the bank and just keep operating off debt. They're gonna be like, "Man, what are you doing?" You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> what I mean, are you doing? Uh, like, we got we got to subscribe to his podcast and uh, follow him on. Uh, he don't tell you everything. You got you kind of got to connect those dots of what he's doing. Because it's weird. It's like the spectrum, right? It's Dave Ramsey, 
get out of debt, operate from a positive, then it's Gordon. <laughs> Use their money. Yeah, yeah Grant Cardone, operate from debt and buy all the stuff you can and live off the cash flow. Like, how many people know what cash flow means? Like, that's buying an apartment and making money off the tenants. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, to buy an apartment, you're looking at millions of dollars probably to buy, like, but a nice apartment complex. Then you got to pay property management. So yeah, that's why he bought all those apartments. You have to buy so many of those Rob, to the, really make the money in, that you yep. want. And then he, I think, see, this is stuff we need to learn, right? He not paying taxes because it's investing. He don't have it. The money yeah, they don't. Invested. He it's don't really his, have it. The bring home. It's not his bring home. <laughs> but money. he got see, a cash flow. See, that's the thing. We get a million dollars. We gonna put into our personal bank account. Government gonna take half every time. Like, every time. But every see, time he take you a million dollars, put and go invest it, go buy an apartment complex, and the money and then that he may make the only million the money, back yeah. off of the tenants. But he's making it like you know, certain amount of money monthly that he right. can spend Cash or flow, yeah. keep in the, in rotation. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? so they don't text. So don't money. fall for all of that, some of that stuff. Because you got to understand, understand the signs behind that stuff. Mm-hmm. It was like Rich Dad, Poor Dad. You hear some of his clips? Dude, it's so funny, man. <laughs> Dude, it's like he, he, I don't know if he really that arrogant in real life, but that's how he talk. That's like yeah. his persona. And you can just do this. Yeah. You can just do this. And my Rich Dad told me to do this. My Poor Dad, he didn't want to do that. So I followed my Rich Dad. <laughs> So I don't have to pay taxes. Rich people don't have to pay taxes. That's what poor people do. Rich people don't have to pay taxes. But guess what? If you don't do that right, yeah. you don't dot them eyes and cross oh, them like, teeth, uh, you, the IRS gonna come holler. The Christies, like yeah, uh, they, yes, ooh, got them. Yes, uh, and that's uh, what we talking about. People be saying, uh, for you. you understand how people be putting up fronts and stuff? Yeah, doing is putting up a front. And then when the IRS came, he waited till the IRS came after him. This is the thinking game moment. The IRS came after him, and then he wanted to put the business in his mama name, and then operate from the background. What? Like they're not gonna see that. <laughs> Ownership changed in his mom name, <laughs> but it's still he's still operating behind the scenes. Man, y'all, they get years for tax fraud, y'all. Yeah, I think, I he, think may he, be he looking got twelve at, but, or fifteen. Oh, do he got to do twelve? Or he he got to do fifteen. She got to do twelve. Oh, they've been sent us already. Uh, they, yep. Wow. Like real, real time. There's not, not no fines. So you want to get here playing like games, talking about you don't have to pay tax. You know, and your kids are employees and stuff like that. You know what Man. I mean? Uh, and they go into the feds. I don't put a shit. They gonna go to like a camp Snoopy fed, like a six. Oh yeah, they show. They're they not gonna go to the, the real feds. They're not gonna go. You know where they, but people getting murdered but and they, killed. But they, but they, they, they go in there probably eat steaks and stuff. Yeah, they probably gonna be eating steaks. Uh, what, uh, pay to play. The pay to play hot, jails. Yeah, uh, when you pay for their jail time, they be like living in a condo. It's day for day, right? You know what I mean? They gotta no, do for, all they sentence. No, for us it's day to day. I mean, but for people that got money, it's day for day. Like you know what I mean? They gotta do every bit of sin. I think like eighty or ninety percent at least. Like you know, you know. So what? 13 years, you got to do at least, what, 11 or 12? <laughs> Man, like, you know, you yeah. go to state prison, you know, they give you a 12, oh, yeah. you might use seven deal. or four, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, you get, you get, 12, you you get good time, that. you get yeah, good time, exactly. you know what I mean? Uh, they they going to go to it, they going to go to like one of them expensive, you know, fed units, they're going to be eating steak, and, you know, have a, a Mac computer, you know what I'm saying, being there trading stocks while he in jail, bro. Boy, they, 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 they the really should fans. flip it and do the reality show out of jail. They could probably make more There's money. There's too many of them on there now doing reality shows out of jail, man. <laughs> I got to do is look for it on YouTube, man. And that's another thing, you. I think me watching Scared Straight, I had my mom record it for me one time. I had to go to work. She recorded the new one. It was like in 2000, something like yeah. that. And the old one, like in 86 or something like that. What? The new one was funny. <laughs> it was funny. But the old one, I said, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I ain't, I ain't going to jail. I'm not even going to put myself in a situation where I can go to jail. I don't even want to flirt with it. I don't even want to be in a holding cell, man. When <laughs> oh, that yeah, dude said, happy man. meal, I ain't been happy in <laughs> years. <laughs> to be locked up for 15 years, man, then you get out of jail, a cell phone is foreign to you? Yeah, I mean, Man, bro, that's crazy. You, 15 years because you get mad? Boy. I got mad one time. Five minutes of emotion give you 15 years. I mean, just pulling out a gun, it could be terroristic threat and a brandishing a firearm. And Some you can people, mess around and get five years for that. If you're emotional, I don't think you should just be carrying a gun with and you. And then what kids don't understand, a lot of dudes say this, they go to jail. Just because you go to jail, you're not guaranteed to come home. Oh, no. Or you you won't come home the same. No guns yeah. in jail. And then when you go to jail, you trying to you trying to you trying to go on a straight and narrow now, but you in a place where it's not straight and narrow. No, you you got to be reactionary now. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's react first, think like that. Boy, you gotta, you gotta proactive and reactive at the same time. And then I seen this dude called uh, OG Percy. Shout out to OG Percy. Uh, I was watching this podcast. Yeah, he had a pick with a with a wood handle on it. He said, I could blow your kidneys out. It's like a, a sharp pick. He said, I don't need no blade. I don't need no machete. I just, just hit you with this pick. He hit you with that pick and blow you. Man, dude, that's crazy. Because they can hit you. You don't even realize yeah. you got stuck until he's done. Now you leaking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like Internally, a water faucet. You, you can't turn I mean? that mug off, exactly. man. You know what I'm saying? And that's crazy. And nobody can help you, you know what I mean? Because you die, your blood on their hands, they getting their charge. Boy. No investigation. So kids, please really think, especially going on winter break coming up, really think about what you're doing. Cause you know, Christmas, a lot of times, that's when people start vandalizing. That's when it starts a little bit, it starting to ramp up a little bit. Yeah, don't they, people go in people's houses, man. That, Cause you don't know what it. these people got. You best run to get shot, get killed. And now you you getting killed, you land in this dude's driveway or house or whatever, you get killed. For a TV. No justice for you. You got you mm-hmm. broke in this house. You know what I'm saying? They killed my baby. Yeah. Now your family don't get closure. They got closure because they know what happened, but you got killed, but it was out of you breaking into somebody's house. Don't be that kid to get killed for breaking into somebody's house. Please don't do that. Or trying Please. to rob somebody in the Man. mall. Like Boy. They, they, you saw them buy a, a whole bunch of stuff, and I'm going to you know, run up on them. You know yeah. what I mean? People ready for that. Boy. Yeah, because there's way more can shit carry. You gotta carry think. Now. Yeah, you gotta think. If you get away with that ten times, boy, number eleven could be your like. Yeah. The more times you like get away with drugs, it. drugs though, too, yeah. right? They don't realize too. Like, if you selling drugs at a high level, you start making crazy money selling drugs. The dude who putting you on, not gonna let you stop. If you say I'm done, I don't want to say what you mean. You making me a million dollars or what? No, you're not gonna stop doing nothing. You finna keep me selling these drugs. And then I'm like, well, people don't realize. People that. like, man, I, you gotta quit while you here. Like, man, this ain't this ain't Walgreens. Yeah, this ain't Walgreens putting a two weeks notice and you leaving. No, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of dudes been in them situations that and we know. Like, and you selling you drugs see? out of your hometown. Everybody know who your mama is. Boy, you can't move everybody. No. You can't. Like, you know what I mean? I'm from uh, I'm from here. You know what I mean? I got cousins, uh, so many cousins. You got to be strategic. Mamas, bro. aunties, grandmas. Um, I can't move. Like, if I, I got to, let's say I got $20 million and I want to, like, quit. They say I can't. I can't just, $20 million, I can't take 47 people. No. You know what and I mean? Then, what are you going to put that kind of money in? Like, what are you going to put $20 million in? If you have twenty million dollars in the house, in in safes and in uh, whatever you know what you saying, have. uh trunks, uh, what's that, tr- chest and all that, your house is a target. Yeah, no, every no. day until yeah. that money's gone, your house is a target every day. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Are you ready to play Call of Duty? Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what's gonna happen <laughs> when it. Because when the word get out, oh, mm-hmm. Mike got oh that dude got twenty million dollars in his house. It's done. Man, it's like somebody sent out a bullhorn challenge. Can like I get when, this twenty million dollars? Like when John Wick, uh, they had yeah. a bounty on his head. Yes. <laughs> John, he got twenty million. What? We going to get that? He gonna need a U-Haul to move it. Boy. Cause uh, I think I was listening. Uh, Rick Ross, he was telling somebody in the interview, the, the real Rick Ross. He said he had two hundred thousand dollars in ones. He said it filled up a whole closet in the house. Like it filled up a whole closet. That's crazy. Just one, one dollar bills, bro. Yeah. That's crazy, man. The physical, sp- no, yeah. <laughs> Most of us don't see our checks, you know what I mean? No, so we t- don't know how much money it is because it's direct deposit. Right. We don't true. hold money. Right. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, that most of us get $5,000, you know what I mean? But, like, have you held 5,000 ones? Man. Have you, like, seen it? I've been close to it when I was selling cars at that time. That's why I want to get back to selling cars. Yeah. I've seen it. I was pretty, I think I had, like, three. Two or three thousand, like yeah. at one time, and boy, I mean fifteen hundred at one time, like like see, unless you move up tax brackets, fifteen hundred for the regular person, and, and like money, wait, like money in your hand, like you yeah. know what I mean. We're $10, not talking about is a lot to have. We're not in your talking hand about like a, a direct deposit or like your account balance or your savings. We no, talking, talking about like cash. seeing like you know what I yeah. mean that much cash in this day and age, boy. But yeah, man, comment like. Just subscribe. We're gonna get ready to sign out. If you have a, if you can guess the location where we are, uh, put it in the comments. Um, if you got somewhere else you want us to see, um, 
make your suggestions, we'll we'll go there. You know what I mean? We'll come see you For at sure. your job. You know what I mean? For sure. So, but yeah, let us know. And we're finna get ready to sign out. Thanks for watching. Five Thinking Game Podcast, and we are out.